Hey guys, it's Chris, and I have a cleanish desk. What's going on? I mentioned the other day that it's Amiga cleanup time, and I guess there's no better reason to not do it. I really don't feel like doing it. But every year I take all of my fleet apart. While I could go grab one of the small guys, the 12.6.5s, and do a 3-2 or some Pi Storm stuff, or that would be cool too, and I did get requests to do advanced Amithalon things, which I will get to very soon. I need to take apart the 3000. Why? I have a couple goodies that I want to put in there, mainly a proper fan mount that I 3D printed, the Commodore fan logo. I don't know if I'm going to do this, this because it does have some restriction, but it does look really cool. I'll probably just hang it on the wall. I do have two SCSI to SD brackets that I'm going to send off to certain individuals that have requested them. Even put the screws in them. Check that out. High fancy. And it's for the 3000. I have one in mine already in the gray PLA. Works fine. My main reason is to put this in, but I also need to check on... Uh, yearly maintenance. What is yearly maintenance on an Amiga? Yearly maintenance is checking over your capacitors, checking any for any corrosion, any residual goop, something. You're just looking. Give it a look over just to see. You know, a visual inspection. Make sure you don't have any leaky caps, even though you had it recapped or you recapped it yourself. To give yourself a peace of mind knowing you took it apart, you double checked it, and everything's cool. And then when you put it back together, it won't work and you'll have to spend three to four hours fixing that. So we just upgraded to 3.2.1 on the 3000. We're going to take it apart. It's sitting right there with all that stuff in it. I'm just going to grab that unit, put it over here. We'll plug it into this monitor, keyboard, mouse, and uh, we'll see what we get. Five screws to remove. Six, something like that. Get your magnetic parts bin out. Slide yourself some room. These are extra screws from past projects. You know, there's always an extra part. Table's grounded out. I am grounded out. Got the old prison bracelet on my foot. Which is connected to the table, which is connected to earth ground here. That's how I roll. Today, 31 years ago, I bought my Amiga 2000. I have a 2032 battery in here that is probably dead because it's not holding time anymore. It's always 1992. I do want to get in here and do the fan. You can see here that I hot glued it in. My battery. And we'll see what we get. Is it positive? Is it a negative? Oh, 0 0.02 volts. 0 0.04. This is the positive side, right? Yep. Positive. So I think I found the problem with my clock. E last. Guess what it didn't do? Nope. Here is another one. This is a KTS, which means piece of crap. There we go. Much better. 2.95 as compared to, well, I threw it in the trash, so that one is dead. So we're going to put this one in its place. Take another measurement. Positive, negative. There we go. Much better. 3 volts. Figured out when my clock wasn't holding time. Every I could set it, run all day. Perfect. Turn the Amiga off. Turn it back on. Dead. Did I need to take all this apart to do that? No, I did not. But I just like to check everything over. Everything looks good. I do have these two pegs for some massive accelerator. I don't know what Commodore's plans were at the time. So, I'm good to go. That was a fast check. After this one's done, we're going to hook it up, double check it, and we're going to uh, get this fan mounted. And the yelling you might hear upstairs is the wife and the dog. If anyone has a spring and a button for the 3000 power supply that you just miraculously don't need, please reach out to a brother. I also need a book for the Amiga 4000 and the 600. I have every other manual... Welcome to the Amiga whatever, except the one for the 4000 and the 600. Here's a trick. If you have a regular round thing, it doesn't have to be a screwdriver. 
get your wires all in order and just start wrapping them. Make sure they're not all tangled up. And wrap them and wrap them and push. It's going to give you a nice coiled effect in just a second. Alright. So you can see I just coiled it up and then I just kind of pull the cord out and I have this nice springy thing. Just looks better. Seven minutes later, paper washers preloaded on screws. Short intermission. And through the magic of editing and half a beer, we're good. Yep. Yay. So now with that, I'm going to stick this SOB in there like that. Hold it around there. Good to go. Try to do this as nicely as possible. So this thing, it clips right over here. Right? And if I bring you on around here, you can see this. You know, I have to tighten up the screws a little bit. It literally fits perfect. These are the wires from the fan that I'll plug back in. It's basically doing the same thing as my hot glue booger right there was, except it looks nicer. Get that out of there now. Come here, booger. There we go. One more booger in there. We'll leave him for nostalgia. Very cool design, whoever designed this. Good job, guys. Ow. Drop it on the floor. I'm getting tired. I'm doing stupid stuff. So we'll take the 4,000 apart while I'm exhausted. No, we won't. Put my card network card back in. Now I could replace this fan grill with the Commodore one. It just doesn't look right to me and it doesn't flow enough air. So that's salt. We throw that out. Is this fan going to interfere with the functionality of this card? No. Chris, why don't you put your card up one more slot? No. I don't like anything near the uh, chips. Dust bunny check, okay. Just check them. Okay. With that, we're back to the case itself. But before I put the case on, we're going to do the one thing we can always do. And that is test your stuff and energize. We have hard drive lights. Okay. So now with the 3000 up, this is a little darker of a monitor. Just have it turned down in brightness. Um, we're going to go into system prefs. We're going to set the time. Okay. Clock set. 1223, 912 p.m. Unplug power. Press the power button. Make sure she's drained. Give her a second. Because I can't find the plug anyway. Boot it back up. 3000's booting. Alright. Clock. 1223, 915, or 914, 914. Cool. Yearly maintenance is complete on the 3000. I'm going to turn it off and uh, just. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to launch SMB mounter. Close this real quick. Mount my Amiga share. Networking is working. 991 gigs free. I'm running out of space. Cool. The clock is now fixed. And I'm hoping that is the same for the 4000. Because the 4000 isn't holding time either. I did get the batteries at the same time and install them around the same time. And they're from the dollar store. Lessons learned. Don't buy batteries for your precious Amiga at the dollar store. All right, so we're booting. We have the screen here, or back to its little tiny monitor. Uh, time, 12, I mean, yeah, 1223, 923, 923, 1223. Awesome, so battery is uh, all better. We're cooking with bacon.
This one's my favorite by far. Is it the fastest? No. Well, it's the same as the 4000. They're both 04025s. Uh, this is a test of metal copy two. Cool. Yeah, keyboard is functional. Works fine. Should put the Amex card in here. Now that I have the RA SCSI, I'd like to see if the Amex board could use that. That would be cool. Separate Amiga and Mac partitions, because it's a Mac. Maybe I'll reprint this in the Jesse PLA, but it took so daggone long. This is the last print of my crappy printer that actually sort of kind of turned out halfway decent. So, one wobble pop, repair, dollar store battery, my bad. Uh, general overview and checkup, everything seems perfect inside, very clean. A couple dust bunnies, and we got the fan put on the proper mount and we're going to keep an eye on its temperature also. So that is all I got for maintenance number one of many. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.